Good morning. So this is what the sky looks like. You can see there's still some evening light in the air. But the sun is coming up. I'm shooting this from inside because it is a frosty minus 40 this morning. And I thought I'd take the time to talk about lights. So I just wanted to make this short video explaining when I use supplemental lighting um, and when it is and isn't necessary. Because I know there's been a lot of questions. Um, I'm on a Facebook group called Canadian Gardeners and I've heard a lot of questions about, you know, which lights do I use and how many lights do I need and, and all of that depends a lot on your particular growing circumstances. So I'm just going to explain what I do because that's the circumstance that's fully flushed out for me to explain. So I, I do have supplemental lighting and I use that primarily when I'm first starting seeds in order to make sure that they're really strong um, and that they grow really densely that first little bit because if they are leggy right off the bat then they will tend to be strung out for the rest of their indoor growing season. They don't really um, bulk up at that point and not all things can be pruned in order to get them to clump up tighter. For example tomatoes, you really don't want them to get too leggy um, because they are, you, you can't prune tip to, to get the height down. Now, oh, there's so many things I wanna get into here. I'm just gonna start with the basics. In December and January, we have very short periods of time in which sunlight is um, available through this big window. Um, we tend to have daylight for from about 9.30 till maybe quarter to four uh, in, in the darker parts of winter. Uh, that's if it's not heavy cloud cover. And in January and December, that light isn't very bright. Now in February and March, it starts heating up. Um, the sun gets much more intense and it begin, begins to climb in the sky and we have longer days at that point, light isn't as necessary. So I have been growing these things down here. All of the big stuff you see in my window, this is basically all for indoor growing with the exception of the ginger and the sweet potatoes. Um, now the ginger and the sweet potatoes, I'm starting now because the ginger was sprouting already. The sweet potato, I am sprouting in order to collect slips, which I will then root, which will then go into pots. And so it's a longer process and that's why I'm starting that already. Um, but I do not normally start anything for my garden except for onions, which can be a very long, slow growing um, process for, for me. And so that's why I've started my onions so early, but nothing else that I'm transplanting in the garden is being grown this early um, except for alyssum. And occasionally I will have done some her herbs at this point that are very slow growing. So don't panic if you haven't started anything yet. It is probably too early for most things. You need to check on your seed package. You need to go back and look at the how to figure out when to start your seeds video. I'll post that in a card here. And yeah, so take a deep breath. You're okay. Um, All of these greens are just for me to eat and because I started them in the bleak midwinter I have had them under lights this whole time um, and it, it's beneficial for them at that point. I'm going to start um, collecting baby leaves. I can probably start collecting off of these cabbages for sure. Um, and then once I start more um, things that need the light, they will go under my lights. So these onions are only gonna stay under the lights for maybe two weeks or until I have 
as, as long as I have space to keep them under the lights. As soon as I start new things, as soon as my asparagus sprouts, they're gonna take over. Um, they're gonna get put under lights instead. And I just sort of shift through. That way I don't need very many lights. And as the spring gets closer, our um, light gets more and more intense from outside. And so then I don't need to add more additional lighting. Um, the only things that I have that I put light on for the whole time that I'm growing them is generally tomatoes and peppers. Um, light is going to be especially critical for your hot, your hot crops, your hot season crops. So um, your tomatoes, your peppers, um, if you grow eggplant, uh, ground cherries are in that same family and things like cucumbers, melons, squash, pumpkins, etc. Those things will all benefit from additional light. Um, most other things, I just keep them under light. Like the alyssum, I could grow without the light, but I do know if, that, if I have them under the light right from the get-go for the first two or three weeks, they'll get really nice and dense, and then they'll be able to fill out better later once they hit the uh, outside. Another thing to consider when you're starting inside, because I know a lot of people are worried that um, things like my onions might get too big because they are started so early. But the size of your pot makes a big difference. And here is an excellent example. So this here is a cabbage called Melissa. Now I'm growing these for baby leaves, like I said, but I decided to do a little experiment. Here is two cabbages in a small, maybe one half, one and a half inch pot by the two and a half. Back here, I've got the same cabbage, two of them again, in a much larger pot that were started the same day. I'm just gonna pop that one right in there to sit. These were started on the same day under the same conditions, they've been under just the same light, they've been in the same tray, um, but they're in a much larger pot, comparatively. And so, the size of your pot does make a difference. If you want your plants to get much bigger while they're indoors, you need to put them in a larger pot. Um, at the same time, if you want your, pot, your plant to stay smaller while it is indoors, you want to consider a smaller pot. So pot size makes a big difference. Um, pot size and crowding makes a big difference as well. So those are just some things to take to take into consideration. Um, starting things early can benefit you, but if you start them in a really little pot and you leave them in a really little pot, then they're not going to get much bigger than they than they have room to get. Um, also things can get very pot bound, so you don't want to start things too early in too small of a pot because they're going to get root bound, the roots are going to go in circles and get all confused about where they're going. So I would just really like to encourage you guys that if lights are outside of your price range, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, you can grow things without lights and if you do have a bright sunny south facing window, um, I highly recommend to, to use that, throw as many trays as you can in that window. Um, you can add a, a very simple homemade reflector to help um, balance your light. So what I've done in the past is you can take the, the clear trays that often come with these um, black plastic trays. You can line that with aluminum foil, tin foil and just set it up so that it is reflecting the extra light that comes through uh, through your shelving unit back onto your plants and that can help them from um, really turning one way or the other. Now, I wanted to get a little bit into the science. <coughs> Sorry. I wanted to, <coughs> I'm not sure what's wrong with my voice. I wanted to get into the science of why plants will reach for the sun. I'm sure you've heard that phrase before and if you've started seeds before you've seen it, where a plant will completely bend its face 
So for these tomatoes, you can see they're doing it a little bit. They are facing that way a little bit more, but when, when they're really bent, they'll often fully go over like that, where you see crook in the stem. <clears throat> Why does that happen? Well, it's a very interesting process, and it might not be what you think. So, basically what happens is when the sun hits the stem of your plant on one side, well, well when the sun hits the stem of your plant, it causes the plant to stop producing a hormone for growth. What that means if the sun is hitting all the sides of your plant is it's um, basically it's a, it's a hormone that causes the plant to stretch out. If it hits all the sides of the stem of that plant and leaves, then that hormone isn't present and only the normal but short dense growth will happen. However, if there is a point on the plant that gets shade all day long, i.e., you know, if, if you're in a south window and there's the north side of your plant stem, that side isn't going to get any direct sun. And so it's going to continue producing that stretching hormone, that extra growth hormone. And so what'll end up happening to make your plant turn, as it were, is that this side doesn't grow or not excessively, whereas this side continues to produce that stretching hormone because it hasn't ha had sunlight. And so it's growing faster and causing that side to, to be longer, essentially. It's causing one side of the plant to grow longer, which pushes the face of the plant towards the sun, allowing the, sun, uh, allowing the leaves to get as much sun as possible which, if I must say so myself, is a very cool, nifty little piece of design right there. Um, so basically what you want to do, if you have plants that are turning very strongly towards the sun, you wanna turn them and you wanna give them supplemental light if you can, um, or you wanna turn them and you wanna add reflectors to try and give them as much even light as possible. A reflector is never going to compare with uh, the, the full intense direct sun because it's only going to be reflecting a portion but it can help um, and when you notice that your your uh, seedlings are really reaching then you know that they're not getting sufficient sunlight the other thing is if they're if they're just stretching straight up if you've got seedlings in a window and they're just stretching straight up and they're getting super leggy and you haven't been giving them any additional lighting then you probably have a window that is glazed to um, reflect most of the solar energy that comes in. And so it's not going to be a great window for starting seeds in. It's still better than nothing, but it would be a good idea at that point to purchase some, some additional lighting, even if it's just these small, cheaper strip lights. Um, and I've heard a lot of people say they use shop lights. I've heard some people say they use um, aquarium bulbs in light fixtures that are suitable. Um, so, you know, do, do what you can with what you have. Don't feel defeated. If something's not working for you, I just wanna encourage you to figure out what it is and then try again instead of giving up. Let's just not give up. It's not worthwhile to give up that's a whole bunch of energy down the drain. So let's push on through. And hopefully this video will give you a bit of an insight into how I use my lights and when you might need them. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.